I'm sure you know about ultra wide monitors already and that they can help increase productivity for everyday workers and create an immersive environment for those gamers too. For the past two years, I've been using the Alienware AW3423DWF, but there's something special about this ultra wide monitor. It has an OLED panel. Despite its inky blacks and high contrast, one major concern has been burn-in though. So now after having this guy for two years, how has it held up over time and did it develop any burn-in? These are some questions I'm going to answer today as well as should you be concerned with OLED panels for everyday productivity and share some of my experience with the two. This is my first OLED and ultra wide monitor all in one. I originally bought this for gaming, but with a toddler, long hour game sessions have been placed on hold. So this monitor has been used primarily for my nine to five job. I'm a software engineer by day and I have all the traditional productivity apps on here. Teams, Slack, Zoom, Chrome, Visual Studio Code, and so on. I spend most of my days in VS Code and terminals. So I have a lot of static menu bars. Then at night, I utilize Notion to plan my videos, DaVinci Resolve to edit them, and Audacity to record them too. And when I do get a chance to game on here, that's also nice. But besides that, it's typical browsing Reddit, YouTube, and going on Discord at night. First, I had to look up how many hours I've used this monitor, for which it took a little bit of time, but there's a nice Reddit post on how to get to that Dell secret menu to show how many hours you've used on it without downloading any additional software. How many hours do I have on this monitor? I currently have about 3,322 hours on this monitor. So damn, almost after two years I've had this monitor, I've used this for about a little over 3,300 hours now. Next, I had to figure out how to test for burn-in without going and just running YouTube video. Luckily enough, Dell has their own self-diagnostic tool, so you can find that in the control panel and the joystick button area. So how did that actually go for me though? This is again, gonna be my first time showing off what I've done with the panels. Having this monitor for two years with 3,300 hours of screen time, I'm happy, actually pretty ecstatic to say that there's no burn-in. I think I'll have to set up a calendar reminder before this three-year burn-in warranty runs out on me. So if you're curious to watch for the three-year experience, please don't forget to subscribe. As well, if you've enjoyed this so far, don't forget to drop a like down below for finding that secret menu button. Again, shout out to Tim underscore inside 2523 for explaining the process pretty easily. First off, I've never used monitor legs, as I find it a little bit too clunky for my smaller desk. I have a 48 by 30 inch desktop, so I've had it only on a monitor arm. And excuse my frugalness, I've had this dual monitor arm set up for a while, but I use the second one as a webcam for the time being. The display has been great for late night working and gaming sessions, as I enjoy the great contrast of a dark mode on my Mac or PC. I think every time when I go back to working on the IPS panel, it's really night and day from the differences in both colors and contrast. But it won't matter too much I'd say for productivity apps unless you're like me and have a lot of dark themed apps, especially VS Code, iTerm, or just run a default dark mode in general. Now when this monitor first came out, people were throwing a fit about having the text fringing. I'll say when I first got it, I didn't really notice it that badly, especially after a few couple days or even a week, I definitely forgot about it. Especially since I use 95% of my work is text related and it has to do with how the LEDs are arranged, but I'll drop links down below for some resources to that. They also do the automated pixel panel refreshing every so often when it feels like it's necessary. So there's software to help ease your mind. As more companies offer OLED panels, I'd expect more competition. I have seen this specific model, the AW3423DWF, come down in price for some good sales too. So that's a big plus for your wallet compared to the original price of $1,099. 
if I had to complain about something, it'd be that if you're in a really bright lit room with a direct light source hitting on the monitor, because the panel is not matted, it is very glossy, it might be an issue. You might just have to end up turning up your brightness of the monitor, which could potentially have burning issues. But for me, it's a minor issue at the end of the day because I don't have, you know, direct sunlight on here as well as the lighting in the room is not that crazy. And one more nitpick, I do wish the burning warranty was a little bit longer, but I guess three years will suffice for now. And they have a really good program from my understanding where people are willing to get swaps instantly. All in all, if I had the option to go OLED again for productivity, I think I'd double down and get a larger screen actually. I think I'd honestly just repurchase one. Maybe if they came it in a matted option, that'd be really nice too. Well, if you made it to the end, Thanks for checking out this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace.